If I asked you what topic of calculus you found hardest, what would it be? Implicit differentiation, maybe chain rule, product rule, quotient rule, maybe dealing with trig functions. What happens when you put a bunch of those things into one problem? Gets pretty tricky, right? Well, I wanted to show you an example of how to deal with all these different things when they're all wrapped up into one problem, because I agree, it can be really hard to kind of keep track of the different steps of that process and how to apply all those different things to solve just for dy dx in one single problem. But be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I assure you I can help make it a little bit easier for you. Hopefully set you on a path that you feel a little bit more comfortable solving problems like this on your own in the future. If that sounds good to you, be sure to stick around to the end of the video. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Find dy dx by implicit differentiation. This time the equation we have is tan of x minus y equals y over 1 plus x squared. So again, same as these always start, all you got to do to start out is take the derivative of both sides of your equation with respect to x. In this case, whatever your variable is, whatever this letter is down here on the bottom of your dy dx. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x. To take the derivative of tan of x minus y, we're going to have to use chain rule. Chain rule says... First, figure out what your inside function is. In this case, it's quite clearly what's inside of our parentheses here. And then we can treat the rest, the tan part, as our outside function. So we're going to take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside function alone. The derivative of tan x is 1 over cosine squared x. So in general, the derivative of tan x is 1 over cosine squared x. And this formula is actually on my free calculus one study guide. If you want to go grab that, there is a link down in the description and the pin comment below where you can go get yourself a copy of that instantly. It is free and it's available for instant download. So go grab that. This is one of the formulas on there. Um, I'm not going to show you in this video how to actually find that derivative, but um, it involves quotient rule. I'll tell you that much if you want to do it on your own. But for now, let's go ahead and just use this formula. So derivative of the outside, leave the inside function alone. So the derivative of our tan function, leave x minus y as our inside function. So the derivative of the tangent piece is going to give us 1 over cosine squared of whatever our inside function is. So in this case, we're going to have 1 over cosine squared of x minus y, because we need to, by the chain rule, leave our inside function as our inside function. And then we multiply that by the derivative of our inside function, the derivative of x minus y. The derivative of x is just going to be 1 because we're taking the derivative of x with respect to x. x is a variable. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. It's going to behave the way you'd expect. It's just 1. Then to find the derivative of y, y is a function of x. So we don't know what y is. Therefore, we don't know what the derivative of y is but we can just say minus dy dx. So that's going to be the chain rule applied right there. Then over here, we're going to need to apply the quotient rule. So quotient rule says that the derivative of a fraction like this, basically you want to call the top of your fraction the, the high part and the bottom of your fraction the low part, higher and lower. Um, the derivative of this, um, so y is going to be our high, 1 plus x squared is going to be our low. Let's just quickly figure out what the derivative of each of those things are. So basically high prime and low prime. The derivative of this top function, the derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. The derivative of this bottom function with respect to x is just going to be 1 plus 2x. And that would just be with the power rule. Uh, I'm sorry, not 1 plus 2x, my bad. Derivative of a constant is always 0. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay, so then quotient rule says the derivative of your fraction is always going to be low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So low d high would be low d high, so times the derivative of high. High prime is the same as d high. Derivative of high is dy dx minus high d low, so minus y times the derivative of low, so times 2x, all over 
low squared, all over the bottom squared. So all over one plus, my goodness, all over one plus x squared, all squared. And it is very important when you're squaring this denominator, make sure you have this in parentheses here. The squared needs to uh, be applied to both these terms. And it does not distribute. Remember, that's not how um, two terms being added within parentheses raised up to a power works. We need to foil that out but I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so like we've been doing, like I've been saying, once you take the derivative of both sides of your equation, what you're gonna need to do is move all of your dy dx terms to one side of your equation, move all of your non dy dx terms to the other side, uh, and then we'll hopefully be able to factor from there. In this case though, this is a, a little complicated of a, a, a point where we're at here because we have these fractions here, right? So what we probably want to do first in order to be able to effectively move terms around by just simply adding and subtracting them, we're probably going to want to get rid of the fractions, which means we can basically multiply both sides of our equation by the denominators. So multiply both sides by one plus X squared squared, and also multiply both sides by cosine squared of X minus Y. So I'm kind of out of room to write that, but, um, be sure that you apply both of those. We're going to multiply both sides of our equation by both denominators. And all that really does, another way you could think of it is cross multiplying. So we're going to multiply our denominators across and our numerators across. So we get the denominator over here times the numerator over here, the denominator here times the numerator here, which is one minus dy dx. Now, when we're multiplying our cosine squared x minus y times this whole numerator, notice we have addition and subtraction within here. Make sure you put the whole numerator in parentheses. That's very important or else you're not gonna properly distribute that. And you'll end up with the wrong answer. Uh, instead of y times two x, I'm gonna write that as two x y. Okay, so now that we've done that, we should be able to kind of expand everything out. So basically kind of distribute everything within the parentheses here, which might get kind of messy. And I'm thinking there's probably gonna be an easier way to do this here. Um, although we might not have that. Yeah, maybe not right away. Um, so let's kind of take this step by step. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead and expand everything out all at once. What I'm going to do instead is noticing that there's kind of like this one plus X squared term on both sides of our equation. I'm hoping that that might end up simplifying or canceling a little bit. So I'm not going to, I'm going to keep the one plus X squared in parentheses as its own thing here. I'm not going to distribute that out. However, what we will need to do is distribute um, basically this parentheses term here into this parentheses. So we're going to get one times one plus x squared squared, which is just one plus x squared squared, and then minus that term times dy dx. Okay. And then over on this side of our equation, we need to distribute the cosine squared term into the parentheses here. So that's gonna give us, and this is gonna be quite a long thing here. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do is move this over real quick. So we're gonna get cosine squared of x minus y times one plus x squared times dy dx. And cosine squared of x minus y times negative two xy. So minus two xy cosine squared of x minus y. So now again, what we need to do, now we've at least gotten it to a point where if we kind of break down all of the terms that we have here, one term there, one term there, one term there and one term there. We've at least gotten it to a point where we can add or subtract, or I'm sorry, not add or subtract. Um, yes, yes. So we can add or subtract all of our dy dx terms to one side of our equation, all of our non dy dx terms to the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract, or I'm sorry, add this term right here to both sides of our equation to move all of our dy dx terms over to the right side of our equation. So that will cancel there. And then I'm gonna add this non dy dx term to both sides of our equation to move it over to the left side. Okay, and that's gonna cancel this here. 
So we're going to be left with um, 1 plus x squared, all squared in parentheses, uh, plus 2xy cosine squared x minus y equals cosine squared x minus y times 1 plus x squared dy dx plus this term right here. So plus 1 plus x squared all squared dy dx. Okay, so now we've got all of our dy dx terms on the right side of the equation, all of our non dy dx terms over on the left side of the equation. Um, and if you are getting some value out of this video, do me a huge favor and hit that like button down below. Um, helps me really, you know, get more traffic on my channel and so I can keep making more videos like this for you. So if you do find this helpful, that would be a, a huge help to me as well. But now that we've gotten our dy dx terms on the right side, our non dy dx terms on the left side, what we can do is factor out the dy dx from both of these terms on the right side, right? There's one term right there, there's one term right there. Both of them have dy dx times a bunch of stuff, right? So we can factor out the dy dx from each of those terms. And what I'm gonna do here actually is just kind of color coordinate things just to make it a little easier to hopefully read this. So dy dx is gonna be pulled out of both of these terms. If we take the dy dx out of this first term, we're gonna be left with cosine squared of x minus y times one plus x squared. And then on the this term here, if we take dy dx out, we're gonna have one plus x squared all squared plus one plus x squared all squared, okay? Left side of our equation is not gonna be impacted. Okay, and then once we've got just one single dy dx, right, again, this process worked perfectly again. It was obviously a bit more complicated of an example, but now notice where we are right here, we only have one single dy dx times a whole bunch of stuff in, in parentheses. So again, super convenient. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by everything within these parentheses here. And doing that is just going to give us dy dx equals this whole left side of the equation divided by everything within the parentheses here. And that's going to be it. That's going to be our final dy dx, final solution there. Well, that was a bit of a doozy, wasn't it? I know learning how to do all this stuff can be hard when you start combining a bunch of different methods into one problem, but keep on practicing, keep on learning, and I'm sure you'll keep getting better at it over time. I've made tons of other videos on derivative methods, implicit differentiation, a whole bunch of other stuff. Go ahead and start with one of those videos over there and let's keep on learning. We'll keep getting better together. And if you did get some value out of this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It's a huge help to my channel so I can keep making more videos like this and we can keep learning calculus all term long. Thanks and see you next time.